So you want to build a PC. Well, I'm going to take you from start to finish, detailing step by step, not only how to build the PC, but how to install Windows and enable the correct settings to get the most performance out of your PC. Who knows, maybe even your PC is not utilizing these settings. Not only that, but I'm going to take you through the required drivers to make sure that your PC is functioning correctly. Hope you all enjoy. So let's start off by prepping our motherboard. We'll need a CPU, RAM, and an NVMe drive. The CPU or central processor processing unit is the brains of the computer. It provides instructions and processing power the computer needs to do its work. The more powerful the processor, the faster your computer can complete its tasks. Today we are using the Intel Core i9-12900K. To install a CPU, you must first find the small triangle on both the CPU and the motherboard. This is the orientation it should be installed in. Push down on the lever, lift it up, and lift the protective capping. Insert the CPU. I like to give it a small wheel to make sure it is completely seated before closing up the lid and pushing down the lever and locking it in place. You will notice the protective cap come loose. Keep this safe in case you need to send your motherboard in for repair. The next step is installing our storage. We'll be going with NVMe storage today as these require no extra cables and have the fastest boot and load times out of traditional storage. Windows will boot faster and programs or games will load up faster. Our motherboard has a heat sink for the NVMe drive so this will need to be removed for installation. New motherboard boards will usually have protective film over the thermal pads so make sure that is removed before installation of the drive. The drive has a small notch on the end which will line up with the notch in the NVMe slot. Insert the drive at a slight angle then push it down and lock the latch. Some motherboards will not have a latch and instead will come with a small screw in the motherboard box. You can now screw the heatsink back on top. RAM or random access memory's purpose is to store short term data that the PC requires to properly operate. You must check to make sure what type of RAM your motherboard requires. In our particular case, we are using DDR5, and DDR5 works best with two sticks. Slots A2 and B2 are the best slots to install our two sticks of memory. All we have to do is release the latches, line up the small notch in the RAM module with the notch in the RAM slot, and apply even pressure on both sides of the RAM stick until it clicks in. This may require a little bit of force, but not too excessive. Our motherboard is now prepped, so it's time to prep the case. This is the Leon Lee Landcool 3, and I like to start off by stripping all of the panels off to make working in it a lot easier. New builders would typically find it much easier laying the case on its side for installation of the motherboard. However, for me to get a better picture for you all, I will install it standing upright. Please keep in mind some older motherboards will require the installation of an IO shield prior to the motherboard installation. There is typically seven to nine screws required on a normal ATX size motherboard. These screws can be found in the case box. I like to start by installing screws in opposite corners which fixes the motherboard in the correct position. This is what the screw holes look like close up. Around the motherboard you'll see a lot of connections. Your case will already have some cables at the back which are ready to fill some of those connections. It is best to get these in early while the case is still empty. Your case will almost always have an audio connection. You will always have a power switch, however the position of these can change depending on the motherboard, so always take a look at your motherboard's manual. And there is usually some form of USB connectivity so that the front case USB ports become functional. Next step is the power supply. The power supply is responsible for converting AC to DC power and supplying the correct voltage to your hardware in the system. The power supply comes with cables with ends usually labeled PSU for the power supply end or C CPU slash PCIe for the hardware end. Now that we know this, we can attach the PSU ends to the power supply. Depending on your case, there are usually two main ways of installing a power supply. The most common being sliding it in from the back. And our way will be installing the case bracket with the four screws included with the power supply, and then sliding it into the case. Keep in mind you want the power supply fan facing down to bring cool air from under the case. At this stage, the only cables we need to connect are the CPU power cables because once we install our CPU cooler will no longer have access to this area. Your case may come with fans pre-installed. It is important to make sure those fans are all plugged in to some fan ports located around the motherboard. They should look like this. If you are installing your own fans or have RGB fans, they may have a connector like this. If that is the case, you may need an RGB splitter like this to accommodate for the amount of fans you have because the motherboard may not have enough RGB headers. Your fans or case may also come with a controller 
which has the fan power and the lighting built into it, which makes this a lot easier for the user. Next step is our all-in-one CPU liquid cooler installation. Installation of these vary from brand to brand. However, there are still a lot of similarities. So I do recommend looking at your installation manual. The cooler will come with the required mounting screws to secure your fans to the radiator. It also comes with the screws required to secure the radiator to the case. Do notice that we have the top fans exhausting up and out of the case as the front three fans are intake. We want to get that airflow close to even positive and negative pressure. Slightly one way is not an issue. To mount the cooler to the CPU, you need to install the cooler backplate and screw it into place. Most coolers will come with pre-applied thermal paste. However, if yours does not, then you need to add a small amount to the CPU before installation. You are now ready to mount the cooler. I like to install screws diagonally and tighten gradually for an even spread of the thermal paste. Your CPU cooler may also come with a USB header, so now is a good time to plug that in. This is probably the best part about building a PC, the installation of your graphics card. We will be using the Asus Strix RTX 3090 today, but the same methods apply to all graphics cards. On the GPU IO, we can see that there are two slots that the card will take up. So I know I need to remove two screws and two brackets. Make sure to remove the protective slot cover from the GPU before inserting it into the motherboard and screwing it in place. Now our PC is built. All we have to do is plug in the rest of our hardware, the PCIe cables for the GPU and the 24 pin for the motherboard. We can also install our panels back in place, plug in our power cable, which can be found with the power supply box and test boot the PC before we complete our cable management because it would be a pain to have to remove our neat cables because of a simple issue. Time to install Windows. Let's save you guys over $100. Do not buy this. Instead, grab yourself a USB drive over eight gigabytes in storage space, head on over to this URL and click on Create Windows 10 Installation Media Download Now. Accept the terms, click on Create Installation Media, select the language and edition and select your USB flash drive. It will take a few minutes to create the installation file. Once the installation is on the USB, it is time to plug in a keyboard, mouse, the new USB drive and a monitor. When turning on the PC, it may not be able to detect a boot drive. Sometimes we have had to go into the BIOS, click on the boot menu, find CSM and enable launch CSM. After changing these settings, you can click exit, then save changes and reset. You may not run into any of those issues and come straight to this screen where you should select your appropriate language and location. If you have a product key already, feel free to enter it now. If not, click I don't have a product key. Select the Windows you wish to install. Majority of people will select Windows 10 Pro. Once you've reached this screen, you want to click custom install Windows only. You will see a list of available drives for you to install Windows onto. If you have an SSD or an NVMe drive, Windows will benefit from the faster speeds being installed on that particular drive. The PC will begin to install Windows and the PC may reset a couple of times. Eventually, you'll be prompted with some setup questions and preferences which are unique to the individual. So go ahead and make your way through that. We are now fully booted into Windows. And the very first thing that I like to do is connect to the internet and check for updates by typing update in the search bar. If your PC cannot connect to the internet and you have access to another computer, you can now search up your motherboard, find the driver in the utility section and download various drivers such as LAN or Wi-Fi onto the USB to install onto the new computer. Simply extract the files and double click on the applications to begin setup. Next, we will want to download our graphics card drivers. AMD users will head over to this link and click on the auto detect download option to install the adrenaline software. Nvidia users will head on over to this link, search for your particular graphics card, download and start the installation process. This step is important for gamers, streamers and content creators because now we have access to hardware encoding. This will give you an increase in performance by enabling help from the GPU. The next step, you want to right click and select display settings. Select advanced display settings and this is where you will want to change your monitor's refresh rate. They are typically set to 60 hertz stock. You can also double check it worked by going to the Nvidia control panel, click on change resolution and it will be displayed there. You may also have multiple drives in your system. Type disk management and open it. Your drives will show up here. Any that have a black line instead of blue need to be assigned a new simple volume and drive letter. You could do this by right clicking on them and selecting new simple volume. Once you have completed that step, your hard drives will now show up in my PC. Next step is to start typing control panel into the search. Select hardware and sound, power options and select high performance. Now that our settings are optimized, there is still one more thing 
nothing left to do. We need to enable XMP so that our RAM is operating at advertised speeds. In Extreme Tweaker, we can change AI Overclock Tuner from Auto to XMP Profile 1. As you can see, we went from 4800MHz to 5600MHz. If your system keeps crashing, it may be a bit unstable. You can lower the speeds in the My Favorites tab slightly, or just turn XMP off as a last resort. Now remember, to get into the BIOS, you need to just keep hitting the delete button when you go to turn your PC on. You can now go to exit and save changes. Thank you so much for watching guys. If this video was of any help to you, consider hitting that subscribe button. Let me know down below if you have any questions and consider watching this video right here. I'm sure you guys are gonna love it.